Hi friends, this is another one to make you learn something that is best in the literature. This time I have chosen one of the aspiring poems of Samuel Johnson and its title is From the Vanity of Human Wishes. Samuel Johnson was lived in England during 1709 to 1784. He gained fame through writing a dictionary of English language. He was the founder of very famous periodical, The Rambler. Johnson's criticism was the vital part of his writings. Next, let's know few things about the poem. It is a satirical poem published in the year 1749. As the subtitle suggests, it is an imitation of Satire 10 written by the Latin poet Juvenal. It is a long poem with 25 stanzas written in heroic couplet. Johnson discussed the valueless desires of humans in the beginning part of the poem and concluded it with his religious faith on Christianity. The poem is categorized into various sections such as political power, financial power, intellectual power and even sexual power. Next, we'll see the summary. In stanza 1, Samuel Johnson had very extended view on mankind and he examined it from China to Peru. He was not happy with his observations because he identified that mankind was dominated by hope, fear, desire and hate. All these emotions ended up in misleading the people. Also speaker included that pride was ruling the humans which led them to behave as ghosts. On the other hand, speaker designated fate as a clouded maze that every human should travel in it. A clouded maze in sense, it is a kind of puzzle through which one has to find a way. In stanza 2, the speaker told that the reasons, the reasons were the only thing which seldom guided the people to choose the good path. The decision of the fools were directed by the desires but not by the reason. So this led to the destruction of the entire nation. He told that fate has the power to change the every wish, every gift of nature and the grace of art into the worst thing. Also the good qualities such as courage and eloquence can be changed by the fate. In stanza 3, the speaker described about the greediness on money. He told that everyone was corrupted by the desires for money and he described money as an insect. He told that the greed on money made people commit a crime. Even the judges twisted the law for money. But the speaker had strongly suggested that rich cannot buy the truth or safety. And at the same time, more money would bring fear and a risk at any cost. In stanza 4, the speaker expressed that it was better to be a peasant who could enjoy a lot more safety than a king because kings were always in war over their superiority and power. A peasant could sleep calm at night even in his small cottage, whereas a rich traitor should spend his nights awake in the towers of London, and even that with a fear of death. So the only fear of the peasants were they have to save their property from the government. In next stanza, the speaker thought what would happen if the peasants attained wealth. He was sure that they will lose their joy. The fear that arises after possessing all those wealth will scare him. Neither light nor darkness will bring him relief because light will show him what has been stolen and darkness will hide the person who has stolen that. But the speaker worried that still the wind in Britain was full of people's cry for money. In next stanza, the speaker called the Greek philosopher Democritus to arise from the death and told him to see how the world was spoiled by the poor state of mankind. Then the speaker expressed how Democritus had lived his life without any greediness in the place ancient Greece. 
but the british society was totally in contrast with greece the britain was full of greedy people and money hungry people their thirst for wealth and power had no limits portraits of important people were found in every room they hung like a palladium which is the image of greek goddess keeping those portraits gave them a rich feeling but the speaker told that it was meaningless and completely waste of time later the speaker questioned the britain whether she will punish her enemies or she will favor them the poor people of britain did not raise any questions against the politicians in next stanza the speaker portrayed the life of a historical figure to show us that his views were correct he talked about thomas olsey a important political figure during the reign of king henry 8 olsey was very brave and he had all the powers but he was not satisfied with that his thirst for power resulted in over greediness this made a king annoyed and people stood against thomas so everything was taken away from him this action made paul say weak and ill at his last age the memories of his mistake wounded him a lot eventually he died so later in next the speaker asked the readers to guess whether the wish of thomas was right then he told his answer for the question that thomas had a good dream but the way he had chosen to achieve was wrong then he suggested the readers to live with less pride and more justice and compare the life with the river trent the biggest river in england then the speaker listed out the historical figures who ended up badly villiers he was the first duke of buckingham he was killed by assassin and the next harley he was the first earl of oxford and he died because of disease and next is wentworth he was a earl of stratford he was murdered and next one is hyde he was exiled so the lives of these persons were spoiled by their desire for great power next the speaker discussed the fate of those who devoted their life for learning and he encouraged the young scholars to believe that virtue and goodness will lead him to truth and the speaker requested to remember the lydiot's life and galileo's death in next stanza the speaker mentioned about william lord the archbishop of canterbury from 1633 to 1645 and also he was a scholar he dared to reveal people the truth and that resulted him in his death he personified art and genius as weeping figure which was crying at the scholar's storm so this personification was given by johnson the speaker emphasized that even the brave people ran behind the pride to achieve fame so they failed to care about being good at their character the best example was alexander the great who conquered asia to gain honor the other best example was charles 12 he had a very impressive body he was never scared and he never got tired he attained a success in every war and gave his people peace to live but his pride in winning the wars did not satisfied him so he continued to fought and nothing stopped him even when his army suffered due to natural disaster this kind of attitude led him death in poltava thus the poet tries to state that pride and arrogance results in death also the speaker mentioned about zerzex 
and the Roman Emperor Charles Albert. Next, the speaker mentioned the persons like John Churchill, who was the Duke of Marlborough, and Jonathan Shift, a Irish satirist, who had died because of ill health. Next, in stanza twenty-four, Johnson had examined about the feminine beauty as a source of pride and happiness. For example, he had described the life of Lady Wayne and Catherine Sedley. Finally, in twenty-fifth stanza. The speaker told that we should have faith in God's power. He suggested to accept God's decision and believe that God will give us the best. So with that, we can find wisdom to calm us and happiness to cheer us. Thus, the speaker concluded by saying that we have to end up with submitting ourselves to God. Hope this would help you. Keep supporting us and thanks for watching.